climbing. It's physical, it's vertical, it's a lifestyle, and it's a passion that takes many forms, but there's more to it than just muscle. It all started with mountains and the desire to get to the top. In the Canadian Rockies, the waterfalls of summer become a frozen playground in winter. In this arena of climbing, the tools of the trade are picks of sharpened steel and a mindset that's as cool as ice. My name is Sean Isaac, I'm 28 years old and I'm a mixed climber from Camor, Alberta. Mixed climbing is a combination of hard rock climbing, hard ice climbing, putting them together for a wild and completely different game. I think that the Asylum is a, is a really classic new age mixed route. It looms right over the road and you can't drive by without seeing it. It's an awesome route. It has three classic mixed pitches and one hard bolted pitch and some really nice ice climbing. I like to climb with people who have a similar motivation as myself. Jim and I share this passion, this motivation, which makes us good climbing partners. Sean has a lot of drive, a lot of ambition. He has a lot of foresight in his support of mixed climbing. The crux of the asylum is on the fourth pitch. You're doing a rock traverse out of a steep corner across a smooth wall to get out to the ice. And the feet are really bad. Your tool placements are good, but your feet are skating. The exposure on the asylum as you pull onto the ice is super mind blowing. You look down between your feet and it's nothing but air between your crampons and the treetops below. better feeling than being all pumped from steep rock and pulling on to the sick free hanging pillar. <laughs> what up, man? <laughs> Four down, one to go. Yeah. Last pitch of the asylum. The summit pitch. Pillar seems solid. Yeah. Thanks, quite I guess. What I find rewarding about makes climbing looking at something that looks absolutely impossible and, and working on it and eventually figuring it out. <laughs> Five down, none to go. Yeah. Woo! We did it, man! All right. Right on. I think that mixed climb is relatively young. Grades are going to take another jump. I live in the Canadian Rockies and it's special just because it's the mecca of modern mixed climbing and home to some of the best climbers in the world. 
I'm Abby Watkins, I'm 30 years old and I live in Golden, BC. I love climbing a huge, steep waterfall that, um, that goes on forever, that you can kind of uh, flow up. Swing your tool, move your feet, read the ice and just kind of get into a mesmerizing little trance. There's inherent risk in living. You know, we want part of that in our lives, I think, to have some element that's not controlled and that has risk and, and um, that we're just living it. Mixed climbing is, is a very gymnastic part of the sport as well, and, um, and so uh, my background in gymnastics really has set me up well for, for that, it comes naturally. You read the rock just like you would a rock climb, and, uh, read the ice, yeah, just like you would an ice climb. I love my lifestyle as a climber. Climbing takes me to the most incredible places on the planet. I love to be out and playing in these incredible natural places. The only thing holding someone back from pushing mixed climbing is their imagination. Caveman starts with uh, campusing on uh, a little smear of thin ice and rock edges. Then you do about five or six figure four moves in a row. A figure four is uh, you place your leg over your opposite arm. Figure nine is similar except it's the same leg over the same arm. It's kind of a bit of a contortionist movement. It allows you to gain extra height, kind of a stable hanging position without having to lock off. The hardest single move on the route was coming out the underbelly of the initial roof. You're in a figure four, but the tool isn't vertical, it's somewhat horizontal, so you aren't using your wrist leash to help supporting your weight, you're just hanging on to your tool. And from this move, you have to kind of lurch from a figure four up to this little edge. You have to get the edge just right or your tool will pop. So uh, you have to be precise, but still dynamic. I don't consider myself a big risk taker. Of course, there's risks involved in climbing, and managing those risks is uh, why I do it. But on a route like Caveman, it's not about uh, boldness, or taking risks, it's about just pushing technical levels. The route is all bolted, so it means you can just focus on pushing your uh, physical abilities and not have to worry about the consequences of a fall. You're super pumped after climbing 10 meters of almost horizontal rock. And then you're on the underside of this dead log. Tool stunk in really nice, but they're really hard to get out. The, the uh, old frozen wood <laughs> grips them really hard. I think one of my biggest strengths is my focus, my motivation. If I get a root like caveman in my head and I want to do it, I'm probably going to do it.
sport climbing. It's all about dancing with the rock. One of the world's top sport climbers is a young woman with a lot of faith who lives her life by the fingertips. My name's Katie Brown. I'm 19 years old. I've been climbing for seven years and I've been playing the flute for nine or 10 years, I don't know. I'm here with my brother, Scott, and we're gonna check out the climbing in Horn Lake. We both kind of got our separate ways, but you know when we get together, we still like to go climbing, something we both pretty much share in common. You like Ricky Martin, don't you? Oh, I love Ricky Martin. We always seem to have a pretty good time, get along well. I got into climbing because uh, we moved to Kentucky, and uh, my brother had been doing it before and just started going for something to do. My climbing style is pretty, well, very slow <laughs> and very static. I always watch people really close and I've gotten pointers from all kinds of different people. I've never had like a coach in the traditional sense of the word. <laughs> I don't lift weights. Basically, just climb for training. Katie's climbing style is slow and methodical. Uh, really looks for the best uh, body position of uh, feet that will help her with her size. And uh, it definitely takes good advantage of rest. You got it. And things like that. It shakes out a lot. Make sure uh, arms are straight when possible. And serves energy very well. Besides sport climbing, I like to boulder traditional climb. Pretty much everything, but I don't think I'll ever try ice climbing or aid climbing. When I'm not climbing, sleeping. I'm probably, I sleep a lot, yeah. Come on. I'm a Christian, and uh, so I don't know about like that the end of stuff, but <laughs> I believe in God and Jesus. A lot of times when I'm climbing or like when I'm on site, I don't remember anything about the climb. I get in some sort of weird zone or whatever. Those are like really good days when I can get in that zone and just tune everything out. If I'm having a day when I can't get in that zone, then uh, I usually I uh, use prayer while I'm climbing. I just pray, and uh, that usually helps me relax and focus more. Katie's a role model for other climbers, especially because uh, now we got such a younger crowd going climbing. I mean, at a young age, everybody looks up to somebody, so when you read about somebody climbing hard or doing this or that, sure, people are going to look up to them. I don't know what motivates me to climb. Uh, I guess it's just kind of become a part of who I am.
aid climbing. It's a whack and dangle, thuggish breed of ascent, but it takes you to the dizziest places. Hammers, pitons and hooks get you up a cliff when the rock is too blank to free climb. It's gut busting work. Be ready to suffer. You change your whole world from horizontal to vertical. Chief is just a huge imposing cliff right off the side of the highway. Everything changes. Uh, you can't let anything go. You can't stand up. Perspective is different. And it's just neat to be in that environment for as long as you can hack it. A lot of the route is spectacular being up there. It's so overhanging and you're so exposed that you just have this incredible out there feeling. When I'm climbing on a tough section, there's a lot going through my head. You know, I'm, I'm looking at what is my fall going to be like. I'm concentrated on each individual placement. I just kind of blank out where I am in the grand scheme of things, and I just focus solely on that next placement. The longer I'm on a wall, the longer I'm, the more I'm enjoying it, the more time I'm out there, the better it is. The quest for new adventures lures climbers to the most remote ends of the earth. Enormous unclimbed cliffs of granite hold a magnetic attraction to those of us willing to make the journey. For big wall climbers Jai Condon and Rich Prohaska, that quest led them to Greenland. In the back of a truck with all of our stuff, well, some of our stuff, the fuel's up there between their uh, between their feet, and we're just about to get our boat to take us up to the Remiate Fjord. From Vancouver, it takes about three or four days of flying, and three days of ferry riding, and then another day of charter boat to get into the Remiate Fjord. Greenland is is 99.999 percent uninhabited and that's what's appealing. People have been around Greenland, especially around the coast, but they get to these impenetrable beaches. It's just cliffs. They can't go any path, anywhere because there's either ice or cliffs. And to a climber, that's paradise. It's something totally different than you do day to day. When you start getting eager for being on the wall. So the closer you get, I mean, as soon as you're you're up there. You just put things where they go and it's 
I guess if you do it enough, it just sort of becomes natural. I don't know why I climb. I climb. There's just a need inside me. It's like a need to drink, a need to eat, a need to climb. Ready to go, huh? Ready to go. How's the weather look? Grim. Any last words? Um, I hope those flakes aren't as loose as they look. That's basically what we're looking for. I'm looking for the place in the world that has beautiful, clean granite and that faces the sun at least 12 hours a day. I didn't think it would rain this hard in Greenland, but it's pouring rain. West Coast style. We still haven't collected any water, so we have about two liters of water left. And uh, we have to figure out some way to get water when it's pouring rain. We end up getting wet. The organization is so key. It's the only time in my life that I'm organized. Rich? Hi, Jack. It's like blue skies up there, eh? Yeah, the weather looks like it's changed. We're still getting dripped on, though. I'm a real peaceful kind of guy. I don't think I'll go to war. Like, I think I would rather disappear into the woods or go to another country if we get caught to war. But there's something still inside of me that wants to wants to fight. Sounds like you're having fun. I, I am. I gotta get into it real soon here. You watch. There is, I guess, something inside me that wants, wants challenge, and it wants to, to be fighting. Oh yeah, we did a water count, and uh, we only have one more day's worth of water, so we're, we really have to get for it today. Whether it's for my own survival or whether it's for my freedom, I don't have a choice. So I fight for my, uh, for my life. Let myself get tired yet. Keep moving, I say. Keep moving. How long have you been going? Uh, oh, 18 hours, pretty much. It brings out things in a person that you wouldn't normally find. Woo, doggy! <laughs> we made it. Halfway. Now we just gotta get down. We return now to the alpine realm, to the cold, to the wild. Taking calculated risks and knowing your limits are the keys to surviving a new route on a big mountain. Only a lifetime of experience and a little luck will get you there and back. I'm Barry Blanchard and uh, I live in Canmore, Alberta, Canada. I've been climbing since uh, uh, probably 1975 or 76, so I guess that's like 25 years. We start at the bottom of the mountain with maybe one or two ropes and whatever we can carry on our back and we try to get to the top of the mountain in one go and come down. Robson, as they say, is the king. I mean, it's unlike any other peak, perhaps anywhere. Looking at that mountain, it's just such a phenomenal piece of architecture. Alpine climbing is just about being outside. It's combining all kinds of different types of climbing. It's just about that sort of spirit of exploration a little bit. You're just going up there to check it out. I was quite keen to try the Emperor face in winter. Generally recognized as one of the probably the biggest uh, technical face in the Rockies, like the most relief, 7,000 feet. It's big.
plenty of moonlight to see. The lake was frozen. It's pretty fun skiing across the lake in the moon and then you come into the shadow of the mountain. It was just pitch black. And it was kind of like, whoa, okay. Always a very unconfident time of day before the dawn. Never make any decisions before the sun comes up, right, Jojo? So is it mine? Most excellent. <laughs> We're pretty much always climbing with our packs, except on the very hardest pitches. Climbing called to me early on in my life, and for whatever reason, I had, to, I guess, the intelligence to respond to it. Once you add winter, snow, ice, and rock all doing their thing in glaciation, it's just a, a wild environment. Hey Steve, are you digging this? Yeah, that's sweet! So much fun! Now your decision-making process is communal, and you all bring in your own personality and your own experience. We're up there as much for each other's company as for each other's climbing abilities. And that's the kind of relationship that roots like the Emperor face require. Large alpine faces are some of the untracked human kind of places you can go. It's definitely a feeling of going to just get up there and touch it, feel it, smell it, be it. It's just a great, you know, sensation to be up there. Well, yes, here we are in the morning bivouac ritual, and uh, we do believe that we're going down. Um, it's pretty non-user friendly here right now. Oh, the first morning, boy, I'm pretty looking, I'm looking forward to this. Here you go, Joe. You just kind of cope and just doing what you have to do to survive. Pretty obvious decision. I mean, we didn't even really have to talk about it too much. Out of 10 starts on these routes, maybe get the summit twice, maybe get to the top route three times. Every time you go down, you put a little something in a bank, you know, the, the odds. Just the fact that we can go through there and, and come out the other end is pretty cool. <laughs> Whether or not we'll go back to the route? Yeah, I think we probably will. We really would like to climb that upper ridge in Summit Robson. It is one hell of a great time and definitely is a place to go that's good for your spirit and uh, I think, you know, good for your soul. Why do we climb? What attracts us to the vertical landscape? Is it the shape of a spire standing stark against the sky? The feel of the stone? Is it to experience the rush of adrenaline or the pull of gravity? Whatever the answer, that question is one of the beautiful mysteries of climbing. And it's different for everybody. I'm Lynn Hill, I've been climbing for 25 years. My climbing style is primarily focused on free climbing. I actually really love the sensation of climbing, the movement, the gymnastics, the problem solving. The spirit of climbing is just to go and keep going and, and keep looking for the solutions. I imagine my center of gravity and its displacement in space some people say it's an escape, but it's actually going to a place that's real and immediate. That's, that's what, where life takes place. We're looking at the waves crashing at the base of this pillar, and it was our first climb in Australia. Welcome to Australia. My name's Nancy Fagan. I've been climbing since I was 13 years old. Nancy is in kind of a different realm than me. 
I'm really a free climbing specialist. I have no interest in freezing in the mountains and all that kind of stuff. Most of the time it's been on rock for me, but also I've done a fair amount of mountaineering and ice climbing and some alpine climbing. As uh, climbers on the rock, we obviously have different approaches. And climbing with Lynn, she's such an amazingly talented climber. It was, it's always a joy for me to watch her and, and to see how she works through problems. The crux on the second pitch that I was leading was very thin face climbing and I was pretty much right on the arrest. By the nature of climbing, you're always challenging yourself. To me, climbing is all about living, living what you dream. The hardest moves on stone don't all take place hundreds of feet off the ground. Climbing has turned to rocks of a smaller scale in its pursuit of absolute difficulty and pure power. Enter the cult of bouldering. A little higher, tiny bit higher. Yep, you're on. Rock. Come on, dude. Come on, oh, oh, oh. ATP is a uh, sloping rail. The foothold is just a tiny little crystal that you're heel hooking. Then you have to summon the, the strength to do this big lunge and just hold at the lip. For a boulder problem like that, uh, a lot of the motivation is doing something that I haven't done before. The thing about, I guess, what I like about bouldering so much is that it's all—it's so intense. When I'm doing a really hard move, I'm totally focused on that one move. I'm just all my concentration is on that dance hold. I try to analyze it too much. Um, I just go and enjoy, you know, the movement of the climbing and just going out and having a good time. I climb because uh, I really enjoy uh, the movement. Since we live on the west coast, uh, gyms are kind of necessary for the winter. Really social too. I like the social aspect of climbing. Come on, Drew. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a matter of, of not wanting to leave uh, the problem undone. There's a lot of times there the problems in Squamish will remain wet for days. It's becoming more and more common to see uh, flames going off in the, in the boulders. It wasn't long before I realized that, that that was more of my calling than any other discipline of climbing. I'm making the hardest moves that I can possibly physically make um, at my full strength. If I'm doing a move, I'm not conscious of what I'm thinking. I just know that I need to make this move. The motivation is, is wanting to just push the limits. I 
It's a flake on an unusual 45 degree overhang wall. Because it's it's as steep as it is, um, yeah, you get a lot of uh, dead point moves. Some of the moves are unlike anything I've done before. this sick mammal at a good height so you're fully feeling the height trying to trying to get just sucked flat against the edge to be able to get your heel up and reach for this little thing what i find is specific with boulders that i like is this power you're you're climbing at the edge of your ability um, with no fear of, uh, of getting hurt. Come on, man, do it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 That problem's unique because it's really tall. It's kind of above water, so if you fall off the top, you're going into about a foot of water. Some stuff looks ridiculous or impossible, and it's a question of getting your mind around it, not so much your body. Well, I mean, I definitely am partial to high levels. Yeah, I think anybody that doesn't get scared probably won't last very long. I like being scared where I am calm enough to deal with it, but in terms of being like, oh my god, I'm gonna die, that's not fun. I think there's a, it's a fine line, and you're always pushing that line. If it's not so good of a landing or there's potential to get injured, um, you have to make that make that call whether it's worth it or not to keep doing it and if it's worth it to just analyze what you you know where you're gonna fall and put it out of your head as soon as you decide to go for it you gotta just let it go there is no one best climber in the world but some climbers do stand out for their genius Peter Croft epitomizes the spirit of climbing. Modest, humble, yet driven by an inner fire, he devours rock and loves to climb like no other. I live in Bishop, California, um, on the east side of the Sierras. The thing that scares most people when they're free soloing is they haven't been doing it and they're just terrified to be without a rope and they're all tensed up. I go soloing when it seems like the funnest thing. If it doesn't seem like the funnest thing, I just, I just don't bother. It suits some people, it doesn't suit others. Because some really good climbers don't free solo, it doesn't mean that they're not really good climbers. It's just, it doesn't suit them, and that's, that's fair enough. There's not really a lot of preparation that goes into going for a free solo. It's more like um, I'm pretty spontaneous about it. Uh, the only mental checklist is just like, do I have my shoes? Do I have my jock bag? That's it. At the beginning of a long that I'm free soloing at the beginning it's kind of mental pictures of just you know trying to perform really well staying cool and nice and relaxed and stuff but once I get going and I'm warmed up it's more just uh, being really into what I'm doing the 
the biggest thing that I do to prepare as far as what I could really call training is just going to routes that maybe I've got pretty dialed and just doing laps up and down. There's all kinds of misconceptions about climbing in general and about free soaring in particular. I mean, it's pretty, really pretty hard to really convince people that you, know, you don't have a death wish. Soloing, you get into the type of momentum where you feel like you can maintain that for hours and hours. It's more like um, hitting your stride or something. I don't do it to be daring or anything, and I hate being scared. Um, it's more just about it. climbing is so fun. Freedom of movement is obviously a big part of it. Just being able to get up and go as soon as the moment is right. You're not having to think, oh, if I do this, then that'll happen and therefore my balance will be here. It's all just like constant movement. And you get into a type of rhythm that I don't think I've ever had on a rope. That's the funnest thing when you're about halfway up and you're cruising and you're fully in the rhythm and it's a good thing. It seems to make you kind of almost hyper aware. Things just look a little bit sharper, colors look a little bit brighter. The focus is a lot more enduring when you're soloing because you're just focusing on the climb, you're not yelling to your friend. And because of that, when you get to the top, it's a little bit like waking up. But as far as satisfaction getting to the top, usually I wish it would just keep on going. Peter is right. The climb of our dreams would never end. Whoever we are, whatever our abilities, there is always another climb to fall in love with.
Yeah.